Hello students, warm welcome to all of you. In this module, we are going to discuss 14th chapter in our grade 9 CBSC curriculum that is statistics. Chapter number 14, statistics. You know who introduced this statistics or who is named as father of statistics? Sir Ronald A. Fisher named as father of statistics and uh, what do you mean by statistics? Basically, statistics means collection and classification of data and the name statistics and uh, the importance of the statistics and you can see in every single field, in every single field statistics is being widely used, right. So, let us try to understand what are the concepts are there in our grade 9 CBSE curriculum in the concept called statistics. See here, we need to understand about what do you mean by statistics as we just now discussed about statistics. Statistics means collection and classification of data. What do you mean by this data? So, data is nothing but the information. Okay. So, what kind of information? For example, in your class of for example, 30 students. I just ask you to tell about what are the marks scored by every single individual student in the previous half yearly examinations for 100 marks. Then I will ask number 1 how many marks you got, number 2 how many marks you got, number 3 how many marks you got, number 4 how many marks you got. Like that I collect the information that every single student scores. right? So, that is one kind of information that I am directly getting the information from the students means from you people. For example, the uh, that I, if I want to get the marks, so that day I am not available in the school, then I will get the information by your class leader. So, your class leader will tell me all the scores. Okay? So, class leader will gather the information and the class leader will be conveying the message to me. See, there are two kinds of conversations are happening. So, the data that I am directly collecting from you is said to be primary data. What do you call the data? So, primary data and the data that I am not collecting directly from you. So, I am collecting the data of yours from other person. So, that is what called secondary data, primary data and secondary data. So, these two are two types of datas. Okay? primary data as well as secondary data. See here, either I am collecting primary data or secondary data, I am collecting the data roughly what first student got, second student got, third student got, fourth student got. So, with the help of that information, I cannot directly say what is the average of your class. Otherwise, how many number of students who can, who scored more than for example, uh, like more than 80 marks if I conduct the class test for 100 marks. Okay, how many got more than 80 marks or how many got more than 75 marks, how many got below 30 marks, I cannot give that information. So, the data that I am collecting roughly is said to be raw data, what do you call, what do you call the data? So, the data is said to be raw data or rough data, raw data or rough data or I am going to call this as ungrouped data. What do you call this data? Ungrouped data or raw data or rough data. The data that I am roughly collecting from you all people is said to be raw data. right? And after this, with the help of this raw data, what can I say? If I observe all the scores, then I would say what is the maximum score of the data? and what is the minimum score of the data. So, here 
maximum score of the data means maximum score and what is the minimum score of the data so minimum score maximum score minus minimum score will give me what is range of the data what is range of the data what do you mean by range range is nothing but maximum score minus minimum score or highest value minus lowest value is said to be range of the data right see here i would like to tell you few important and interesting points regarding range so according to the definition of the range range is equal to highest score minus lowest score or maximum score minus minimum score suppose if i have 10 natural numbers if i have first 10 natural numbers what are first and natural numbers 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 10 so if i want to find out what is the range of first 10 natural numbers then i would say what is the maximum natural number and what is the minimum natural number in my raw data so the maximum natural number is 10 and minimum is equal to 1 so 10 minus 1 is going to be 9 is the range of first 10 natural numbers suppose if i want what is the range of first n range of first n natural numbers first n natural numbers means start from 1 2 3 4 and so on what is the last number that is n so n is the greatest number and 1 is the lowest number so n minus 1 is the range of first n natural numbers am i clear now coming to the second point now it is interesting please try to understand and answer my question okay what is the range of first 10 whole numbers what is the range of first 10 whole numbers so you would say definitely 10 is the first 10 is the range of first 10 whole numbers it is absolutely wrong you know why what are first 10 whole numbers whole number starts from zero so first 10 whole numbers are nothing but start from zero that is the first whole number 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 so 9 is the 10th whole number so that the range of first 10 whole numbers are nothing but greatest whole number out of 10 whole numbers are 9 minus first whole number is 0 so 9 minus 0 is equal to 9 is the range of first 10 whole numbers right so then what is the range of first n whole numbers then you can easily answer my question now what is the range of first n whole numbers first n whole numbers are nothing but starts from 0 ends with n minus 1 because the last nth whole number will be n minus 1 because it starts from 0 so that nth whole number is n minus 1 so n minus 1 minus 0 is equal to n minus 1 is it not interesting right so we understand one thing that range of first n natural numbers is equal to n minus 1 and the range of first n whole numbers is also equal to n minus 1 please do remember this right and after the range of course we are discussing about this raw data after the range i just want to know i just want to know how many number of students got marks from 0 to 10 how many students got 10 to 20 how many students got 20 to 30 32 40 42 50 i just want to classify my data then i can give more information about your class instead of getting raw data and giving information because with the help of the raw data i cannot give any information except what is the smallest number and what is the greatest number so if i want to give more information about the scores of your class then definitely i need to classify your data so how do i classify your data the way in which i am classifying the data is going to lead the another way of finding the data that another way of finding the data is what kind of data that is what called grouped data or classified data what do you call that grouped data or classified data so how do i make this group data or classified data for that i need to form one frequency distribution table what do you mean by frequency so frequency in the sense i am collecting your marks for example of 30 students 
for example, five students got same mark for example, 35, 35 is the marks by five students exactly. So, five students means that number five is said to be frequency. So, whatever the number of observations repeated, number of observations repeated in a particular way is said to be the frequency. So, with the help of that frequency distribution, I need I can convert your raw data into classified data or group data. For that, I need to understand one more very important thing is, see I have marks of 30 students, but what are the marks there? 1 to 100 marks. So, 1 to 100 in the sense, how best I can classify my data? For example, I can take the I can take the groups. So, groups in the sense, uh, for example, my groups are 0 to 50 and 50 to 100. Can I give more information? I can give information, but it may not be more information. Suppose, if I go for 0 to 25, 25 to 50, 50 to 50, uh, 75, 75 to 100 means I am dividing them into four groups. Then also I may not give the more information about your class. So, then how many number of groups I will have to make? For that I need to decide two things here. Those two things are with the help of the given data I will have to find out the range. I will have to find out the range. After finding out the range I will have to classify the data into some groups. How many number of groups that I am going to classify? For that, I need to decide myself what is the width of your group. Width of your group in the sense I should take from 1 to 10 or 1 to 15 or 1 to 20. That is what is the width of my width of my group. So, that width is equal to width of my group is called class interval. What do you call that? Class interval. So, if I divide my range with the class interval, then I will get the number of groups. So, that number of groups is said to be the number of class interval. Understand? So, how can I find number of class intervals? Number of class intervals is equal to, number of class intervals is equal to range divided by width of the class interval range divided by width is said to be the number of class intervals. So, this way I can find out the number of class intervals. Okay? So, if the number of class intervals are more than 5 as per the data, then we can give and we can analyze the data effectively. Hope you understand. So, let us try to understand um, this concept by using one example. Okay? So, here if you observe one data is given the blood groups of 30 students of a class 8 are recorded as follows a b o o and uh, a b also there a is also there represent this data in the form of a frequency distribution table frequency distribution table which is the most common and which is the rarest blood group among these students see here i have 30 students blood groups i have 30 students blood groups so, the total number of students is equal to 30, but my only blood group is A, B, AB and O, there are only 4 blood groups. Okay? So, I am, to, I am going to take this as first column contains blood group and the number of students having the same blood group, number of students having the same blood group, what do you call that name? That called as frequency, right? it is called frequency. Now, I am going to take the blood groups, first blood group is A, second blood group is B, third is AB and fourth blood group is O. Okay? First, let me collect how many A blood groups are there. See how many A blood groups are there. Please be very careful in order to find the blood groups. Okay? See the first blood group that I am taking here is A. How many number of A are there? See here this is one A. So, one and I am going column wise, this is 1, 2 and um, here 3, 4, 5 and then 6, 7, 8, 9. So, there are totally 9 number of A's are there. Okay? How many A's are there? There are totally 9 number of A blood group students are there and then coming to B blood group. 
So, B blood group students are how many are there? B. So, here B is one blood group here and then uh, coming to this is one more B. So, 2 and this is 3 and 4 and this is 5 and this is 6. So, there are totally 6 number of students whose blood group is B. So, 6 number of students and then coming to A B. How many number of students whose blood group is A B? Okay. Now, coming to A B, this is 1, okay, 2, 3, that is it. So, there are only 3 students whose blood group is A B. So, A B blood group is having 3 number of students. After that, number of students whose blood group is O. So, coming to here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So, there are totally 12 number of students whose blood group is O. Okay? So, 12 number of students. So, this is 12. So, let us try to add all of them. So, when you add all of them, 9 plus 9 is equal to 18, 18 plus 12 is equal to 30. So, our total is correct and please be very careful in order to find the number of uh, blood groups otherwise the number of numbers which are repeating. This is only the thing that you need to be focused more. Okay? So, remaining everything is same. Okay? This is about blood group as well as frequency. Here, I found frequency directly. Otherwise, you can find the frequency by writing the tally marks. I think you heard about this tally marks, you know very well. So, tally marks are nothing but see here, for example, A is there. A blood group, number of students is equal to 9. See, instead of directly finding out the number 9, just to avoid such confusions, when, when I am counting, I may get one doubt that I missed out that number, otherwise I counted that number, this kind of confusions. See, A, I have taken one A here. So, cancel that A and write one here. And cancel one more A, write one more one. Third A, fourth A, write one more one. So, like that and then 1, 2, 3, 4 and then all my A's are completed. These are called tally marks. So, by using tally marks, we can avoid confusions that whether I collected, otherwise uh, I counted that number or not. This is only the uses of this tally marks. Suppose if you can do it perfectly and directly, you can do it. Got my point? So, this is what is called frequency distribution table. See, with the help of this frequency distribution table, I can give more information about the data. Suppose if I do not, if I do not classify the given data into frequency distribution table, then I cannot give you in more information about the data. Even how many number of uh, students have blood group A or B or O or AB, I cannot give anything. But after classifying this, I can give exact information about this that 9 number of students whose blood group is A, 6 whose blood group is B, 3 whose blood group is AB and 12 whose blood group is O. So, what does this mean? which is the most common, most common is nothing but more number of students having blood group, which is the most common 12, 12 is nothing but that is about O. So, most common blood group is O, right. And what is the rarest blood group? Rarest blood group is nothing but 9, 6, 3, only 3 students have the blood group AB. So, the rarest blood group is going to be AB. So, the most common blood group is going to be O and the most rarest blood group is going to be AB. Right? So, this way we can easily figure out what is the most common and what is the rarest blood group in the given information. So, hope you understand these are very simple things, but uh, you need to be very focused uh, in order to find, in order to count how many number of O's are there, A's are there, B's are there and AB's are there. So, then it is very much easier for you to make your frequency distribution table. Hope you understand. Thank you.